First of all, a, a big thank you to my Stacking the Box partner, Matt Verderam, for setting this interview up with uh, Charles Snowden, who's coming into his second year with the Chicago Bears on the Windy City Chicago Bears podcast. Charles, uh, 6 7 245 coming out, but I guess the Bears have you in that weight room because we're going from a 3-4 to a 4-3. You got to play with your finger in the dirt. You're – you're just nodding your head. So I hear you put on like 15 pounds. Welcome to the podcast. We really appreciate the time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. What's How have you gone about putting this weight on? I'm assuming this is all good weight for you. Has it been like, oh, whoa, this is a whole nother, it's a huge challenge. I don't know if I can play this way. I mean, how have you, how have you been looking at it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, I mean, my whole kind of football career, I've been kind of focused on gaining weight. And uh, my biggest thing has always been, gaining that weight while also maintaining my speed and mobility and all that. But, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, the NFL has, the Chicago Bears, like, we have all the resources in the world. So food, nutrition, how to do it, drinking and everything, they have it. So they've helped me a lot with that. And, uh, yeah, just kind of transitioning to that 4-3 defensive end, hand in the dirt every down. Uh, so uh, in the beginning of OTAs, as I kind of got up to the 258, 257 range, I was 260 one day, and I just wasn't, moving as well as I would have liked to. And so I think I'm, my body really just needed to adjust. And so I would work with the strength coaches on uh, stretching every day and maintaining my flexibility and mobility as I uh, take on this added weight. You know, when we did your uh, draft series at Fansided, where you were coming out of UVA and obviously about to join the Bears, you were coming off of a pretty serious injury your last year in Virginia and you, know, you weren't able to participate at the senior bowl the way you would have liked to or the combine or some, some things like that. I'm curious, uh, A, you know, how are you feeling? Uh, and B, how long did it take you to feel 100% off of that ankle injury? Uh, yeah, I mean, now, I mean, I feel perfectly fine with it. But uh, it probably wasn't about until week seven, week eight of the season where I finally felt like 95% back to myself with the ankle, especially as an edge rusher where you have to kind of bend and put your ankles in awkward situations. Uh, it definitely was tough at first, but um, it's definitely feeling 100% now. So that had to be super frustrating because on a lot of draft boards, you were a third, fourth, fifth round pick, and now you're going undrafted and you're dealing with the injury. A lot of guys, Charles, you know, in, in college, when they know, not necessarily, at, you know, in, at the third, fourth, fifth round, but if they're a first round pick, they stop playing or they don't play the bowl game because they want to make sure they're healthy. And and some fans are like, well, what the hell? I'm like, what do you mean, what the hell? This, these guys have their dream right in front of them. I know they love their school, but it, it I guess it'd be really hard for you to even look back and say, well, I shouldn't have been out there. But that that conversation is kind of an interesting one because it's, you know, people have a lot of thoughts on it. Yeah, no, people do. I think it's, I mean, it's a case by case situation. Like, I'll never. I will never shame someone for doing what they believe is best for them. And especially in a situation, like, it's not like guys take out of games that, I don't want to say bowl games don't matter, but it's not like they're missing out on a conference game. They're sitting out of bowl games, which are fun and great for the school, but at the end of the day, they don't really affect your season. And so, um, I mean, I, I was playing extremely poorly at the beginning of my senior year. So I definitely, I know for sure I, I needed to be out there. But, um, you know, just can't change the past and just, uh, just try to make the best out of every situation. You know, I'm curious. The Bears are going through transformation. New head coach, new GM. I mean, everything about the Bears, really, it almost feels like rookie season part two for you in a way because it's it's new. For, but now it's new for everybody. It's not yeah. just new for you and your rookie class. First of all, how, how different has it been at House Hall so far? I know it's only been OTAs and, and, and many camp but how different has it changed um i'd say the biggest difference is that these coaches have a very clear cut idea of what they want our our our, our identity to be and so uh and I, i'm not saying that to knock the last coaching staff they were great um and i love them all um but this coaching staff has made it very clear that we will be the hardest playing high effort most in shape team in the league they're very clear as to what they want our identity to be and so that's probably been the biggest difference but uh, it's definitely an adjustment for everyone. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm loving it every day. You're echoing the thoughts of a lot of your teammates. I mean, Darnell Mooney was on a, a podcast recently and uh, over at Redline Radio, and they do a great job over there. And he said that 
the actual structure of practice, the attention to detail, it's just noticeable. You're and and you like. Can you explain sort of what that difference has been like? Like how how you're going about your business now differently? Yeah, it's actually crazy you bring that up because I remember it was like our like one day during mandatory mini camp, like one of our last days of OTAs, and uh, we were just I was just watching team period with uh, one of the other defensive ends, Sam Kamara, and I was like. It's crazy. The drills we do at individual, they show up exactly in team. Like one of our like one of our teammates, uh, I can't remember what he had a pass rush and it was it was identical to what we had just done in individual. And so I think that's kind of what Mooney was talking about, where the things that we work on, like build they all just build off of each other and they're very uh intentional as to what drills what we spend our time on because they all show up in eleven on eleven full team football. He also said that that Matt Eberflus, like I think the fan perspective now is that this is some like really intense rah rah guy, but th- but he's more of a chill like lets the other coaches do their coaching and he's just, just kind of overseeing. This is a first time head coach in the NFL, so it's interesting that he's already sort of settled into that. Oh yeah, hundred percent. He definitely. Um, I mean, he kind of just you know when he runs the team meetings, he definitely commands respect and everything like that, but. Uh, once we're kind of in our defensive meetings or our position meetings, I mean, Coach Flus just lets the defensive coordinator coordinate. Uh, even when we're on the practice field, unless it's something that has to do with the offense and the defense or something organizationally, he really just lets the coaches do their thing, lets the kind of players figure it out. You know, I'm curious what your perspective is on Justin Fields, who obviously, like you last year, now entering his second year, you're a defensive player. Your job in practice, at least in theory, is to go sack him. Maybe not quite get him to the ground, but sack him nonetheless. I've gotten to see him quite a bit. Um, what is your perspective on him entering his second year? Um, I think Justin, he has all the talent in the world, um, and he has the right mindset, and he's definitely someone that loves football. And so, um, I mean – I guess I have a vast uh, knowledge and experience of being around like NFL quarterbacks to what it looks like. But um, I mean, I definitely have all the faith in the world in Justin. And uh, I know that he wants to figure it out. He wants to be great. And I think he has all the tools to do it. And so, um, I mean, I definitely believe in him. What, what did you learn from Khalil Mack last year, Charles? It, you know, he's obviously out the door now, but that's somebody you had to gleam something off of, I would think. Yeah, Khalil, it was, it's kind of hard to learn from Khalil because Khalil Mack is like a freak. Like, I, I will never forget a strength coach, like, one of the first days in the weight room, he was like, Charles, no matter how much you lift, you will never be as strong as Khalil Mack. <laughs> and so uh, there were some things Khalil Mack would do that, like, only Khalil Mack would do it, but he would try to, like, the way he would, like, take his time and practice to work with me, an undrafted free agent rookie, uh, to kind of explain things to me, uh, just the way he really carried himself. Uh, the way he just, like, he had uh, concert tickets. He had a sweet tickets to a concert. Uh, he invited me out. Like, the way he really carried himself as a pro is definitely the biggest thing I took away. And then on the field, I mean, he just did things that I could never really do. But he would always take the time and look out for me. And, like, that's, as I go my career, like, I'll never forget, to, no matter how successful, how far I go, to always look out for everyone after me. It's really uh, just interesting because he's so chill with the media and just hates doing it, basically, uh, which I get it. I mean, we're annoying. That's fine. Uh, and you'd rather be in your locker room. But so I'm hearing that there's more personality behind the scenes than, than you know, fans, the media gets to see that. Would you say that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he definitely has uh, not Khalil definitely has a funny side to him, especially with his little brother was on the team last year, Ladarius. Like those two would go at it as a big brother, little brother only could all the time. And so, uh, nah, he, he definitely does not like dealing with the media, but he, he's a really cool guy. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, what was the process like for you uh, signing with the Bears? Because you know, I, I know, you know, talking to a lot of people around the league, especially in front offices and, and, and really more so agents, they always will tell me, and I'm sure tell many reporters, look, I'd rather almost have a guy go undrafted than go in the seventh round because then you can pick where you want to go, right? You're not, you're not forced into a situation you can maybe look at a variety of different factors and make a determination on where you think's best. What was that process like for you? I mean, obviously you want to get drafted, but you go undrafted. Uh, once you went undrafted, what was it for you that you ended up in Chicago? Um, so for me, it came down to uh, three teams, really. It was uh, Seattle, Atlanta, and Chicago. And I remember my mom was trying to 
look up their rosters and look up this and look up that. And uh, I mean, it really came down to it. Um, one, the Bears offered uh, the best contract in Atlanta. I remember the guy said, we have more open roster spots than anyone in the league. So there's a very high chance you'll make the team if you come here. But uh, just something about Chicago and the Bears, it just, I, I can't, I don't really have, know how, like, I don't have a logical explanation. It just felt right. And so, uh, so I talked to my family, my agent about it. That's kind of just where we ended up going. Well, it sounds like you were betting on yourself. Like, yeah. Oh, right? And Pretty much. Would you call your – I mean, you got you got on the field two games last year coming back from an ankle injury. I'm, I'm sure you dreamt it up that you'd be more productive as a rookie, but considering all the circumstances, were you satisfied with your rookie year and where you're at right now? Um, yeah, I mean, it's – the NFL is so tricky because, I mean, the name of the game is longevity. Like, every day my fingerprint works to get in the building, it, it's a great day. But uh, it's always that that balance of – I'm I'm excited, I'm grateful I'm here. But I know there's more to be done, especially speaking of the practice squad last year, going in every day, like, uh, especially as I kind of got back healthy. Like, I understand initially, I didn't, I mean, per, per, I would have cut me too, personally, just the way I looked, kind of still just kind of limping around. It wasn't very productive on special teams. But as the season got going and I got healthy, uh, it became kind of more increasingly frustrating. Just somebody would go down and they just bring somebody else in. And so um, I don't know if I'd say I'm satisfied with it, but I'm very grateful that. Uh, I was able to complete my entire first year, healthy, uh, come back for a second year, and now I'm really just ready to build on the opportunity. You know, for you, what are your expectations of yourself this season? I mean, have, have you had any conversations with your coaches about what you'd like to see, what they'd like to see? What, what are you looking at in the mirror every day and saying, okay, these are my goals. This is what I'd like to hit in 2022. Um, yeah, I think definitely just being a consistent Four phase special teams player. I think that's kind of the role I'm settling into right now. And so uh, just being an impact player on special teams, on punt return, trying to block a punt, kickoff, making tackles consistently, kick return, always blocking my man, kind of things like that. And so um, I think that'll be the best way for me to stick. And then just the nature of football, season goes on, guys get tired, guys go down. I mean, God forbid, guys go down though. Uh, just going in on defense then making an impact there. But I think the my biggest thing right now, my biggest focus where I'm going to stick is just being a great special teams player and just continuing to prove at, improve as an edge rusher. Yeah, I, I got to ask, do you, do you enjoy special teams? Because, look, a lot of – hey, that is a lot of players' bread and butter. That's how, they, that's how they get in the league. That's how they make their first imprint, and then they go from there to play an offensive defense. Happens all the time, even for guys who ended up in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. But special teams – even more so than normal in the NFL, that's a car crash. I mean, that is you're just sprinting downfield as fast as you can, especially on these cover units. Do you actually enjoy it, or are you like, look, I know I got to do it. I got to get to where I got to get to. It's a necessary evil. I'm not going to lie. I, If you'd asked me this like four years ago, I would have said heck no. But I like – Special teams is almost the purest form of football. Like it is genuinely that's true. running and hitting and it's. I mean, I, I, I like I love it. It's just a, a it gets a lot of just one on one matchups. It's not jet motion screen play action boot. It is just genuine run. Eleven men running down trying to tackle a guy with the ball. Ten guys trying to block and protect them. It, I, I I really love it. That's awesome. Let's go right now. I'm not thinking about anything other than killing you in front of me and seeing where I'm at and then, and then hitting someone. I, I think that's, that's fantastic. Uh, here, I want to go back, though, to uh, defensive line and, and, and the edge life of a bear right now. And the biggest conversation in the offseason is where's Robert Quinn? And when I'm talking to some of your teammates, they're like, well, that's just Rob. I'm not worried about Rob. And and there it is again, like the nod of that. What 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 is his personality like? Can you explain the 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 being a teammate of Robert Quinn? Rob is a, he's a great guy, and but he's just the most laid back from the South. Just I mean, Rob will be Rob no matter what the situation. Like we would uh, we'd always joke because we, our coach would have this great presentation of what the other team's offensive lineman likes to do. He likes to set this way, kick this way, this, and we're all locked in taking notes. But at the end of the day, 
Rob is just going to run. Rob is going to do his signature pass rush move, no matter how he sets, how he kicks. Rob is just going to be Rob. And he, I mean, he's just, I, I would like, he's one of those who you can't, I, I can't explain Rob. He's just, if you hung out with him for a day, you know exactly what I was talking about. I, I, I got it. And we were my the guy who I do the do, do Wendy with her power. Who's he, he does a great job covering you guys. And he's like, I don't think Rob knows he's rich. Like, I just think that Rob is like, <laughs> he absolutely does not know. <laughs> he doesn't. Okay. No. I mean, because he was giving up. I mean, listen, you all make a lot of money and Rob makes a lot, a lot of money, but, uh, and you all deserve it. Uh, don't to get to where you're at. Charles is an amazing accomplishment. Congratulations. And to get oh, to where you. Rob's at a uh, premier, you know, top end player, Good for him. That's fantastic. We've all played sports and you guys made it. So congratulations. I, I wish I was you. But he's uh, but like, OK, you're making a ton of dough. You're he's giving up 14 grand a day to not show up to minicamp. I like that's a lot of that's a, <laughs> that's lot, of a money. lot of money. That's, that's a lot I, of money. I could use that 14 grand a day. So I could <laughs> right. use that. But yeah, he still like, he still drives the pickup truck that he bought his rookie year. Oh, my God. I he's know this that. big red pickup truck and he just drives it every day. That's amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, uh, you know, you obviously come from the East Coast. You come into Chicago. I can identify with that, albeit for different reasons. But we, you know, I, I get it. You come from the East. You move to the Midwest. What has it been like adjusting to Chicago? I mean, the, the the weather is not all that different. Come summertime, it's hot. It's all that right. Let me a little humid. But what has been the biggest difference going from the you know Maryland, Virginia area? To great old Chicago, Illinois. One, I love Chicago. Like I love, I so I live with uh, two other rookies, uh, Caleb Johnson and Sam Camaro, and so the three of us will always just chop it up. And we talked about how lucky we were, like location wise, to end up in Chicago because I love the city of Chicago. The biggest adjustment is just the winter was. I mean, it was cold, yeah, but it was just so long, like. <laughs> When I left when the season yeah. ended and came back, I was like, why? Like the very first day back, I had to wipe snow off my car to drive to the facility. And I'm like, it's, it's the middle of April, guys. Why is it still, why is there snow in my car? And it, that's it, probably the biggest difference. Yeah, it never yeah. ends. And just for the record, uh, it used to be worse. But whatever's going on in this climate, I'm telling you, that that that, that, that winter, we used to get so I don't know what's, you know. Uh, I'm just – that's interesting that you live with Caleb and, and, and Sam. And, and every everyone talks about the life of uh, – the the bigger spotlight that's on you guys. If you go out to – on a, a nightlife, someone's got their phone out and you got you, you to be careful. You're a Chicago Bear. How do you look at that part of the gig, just trying to, you know, not get yourself in any harm's way? Well, uh, luckily for me, Caleb, and Sam, we're nobodies. So, like, we go out. No one really pulls their camera out. We just enjoy ourselves, have a good time. You're but, six. Uh, you're six four, African American, total fifty pounds. Really, nobody notices. That's kind of amazing. They'll ask me. They'll always say, like, "Oh, like, are you a ball player?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, I used to play basketball back in high school." <laughs> <laughs> so that's the truth. <laughs> and so, um, but yeah, it, it's very interesting because, like, me and Caleb said, "We'll go. Out, we'll have a good time. We'll, you know, we're, we're not really thinking too much of anything." But like we'll go out sometimes with uh, like some of the more high profile players, and it's at first I was like, oh, why are they so boring? But then I, I, after a while, I'd realize like they just have to move differently because they are in the spotlight, and so it's not that they don't want to have fun; they just can't. They just can't just be twenty something years old, young and successful because they have that spotlight on them. And so uh, that's probably been like one thing I really noticed is just how how to go out and how to have a good time and all that good stuff. Are you, uh, are you a bit of like a foodie or a travel guy? And what, it, you know, it, it, I only ask because in Chicago, obviously there's no shortage of stuff like that. I'm, I'm curious uh, if you have any favorite spots you've kind of procured over the last year. Uh, I'm not a huge foodie. No, but Chicago it has had a bunch of great restaurants and, uh, just the one thing is I just didn't get to go into the city of Chicago as much as I would have liked just because Hallis Hall is all the way in Lake Forest and we live up in yeah. Glenview. And so uh, just driving into the city is uh, sometimes a bit of a hassle. But um, I've definitely had some great steak in Chicago. I'm a big a steak in my favorite food. I've had some, been in some great steakhouses, so I love it. 
I, I know that you're, you know, because back in the day, you, you relied on your mom's home cooking, right? Didn't she, didn't she help you put on weight in college or something along yeah, those lines? Yeah, she sure did during COVID, yeah. <laughs> okay. What What's mom's specialty? Uh, mom knows I like steak, so I, like during peak COVID, she made, uh, like, she would make a couple steaks a night. She would always <laughs> make sure I was well fed. And so uh, I'm very, very appreciative of my mama. Yeah. Okay. She she grinded you on that schoolwork too, right? I mean. Oh, of course, of course. And I don't want to. I don't want to shortchange my dad either. My dad is okay. a world class breakfast chef, and so uh, the the two of them keep me very well fed. Yeah, that's that. See, Dad's got to be able to do breakfast. I don't know if Verram, you could pull that off over there, buddy. But you got to be able to make right. a waffle, pancake, something. I mean, I can I can like cook up some eggs. I mean, I'm not, I'm not exactly a world class breakfast <laughs> chef there, like Mr. Snowden. That, that's not going to happen. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it, it, good for you, man. When I was a kid, my God, I love both my parents to death. But if, if they cooked, it was time to grab a box of cereal. Um, okay, that was the only thing that was going to be edible in that house for dinner that night. Um, you just prayed there wasn't going to be a house fire. Uh, so that that's great. I, I, last thing for me, Charles, is just look, you. You you played in a couple of games last season. You mentioned you're on the practice squad, but hey, for an undrafted rookie free agent, especially for a guy coming off of serious injury, that's a heck of an accomplishment. A lot of guys don't even make the practice squad, don't make the team. You now have a head coach who's a defensive minded head coach, which is something that is increasingly rare in the NFL. I guess just a basic question: How excited are you for your opportunity this year? Considering it is really a fresh start on a team that is young, that is building not you know, now, but for the future as well. Um, you know, where's your headspace at on that? Um, I mean, I'm definitely super excited. I mean, now it's just like being a second year guy, uh, just the expectations are a little different, but I mean, I'm absolutely excited. Uh, just working hard every single day, uh, just knowing now what it takes to make the team play in the NFL, be successful. And so, uh, I mean, I, I'm super excited for the team, super excited for myself personally. And, uh, I definitely like where we're going. I got three real rapid fires here. They're not, although you can talk eloquently if you'd like. One, what, what will, I, listen, I loved Akeem Hicks when he was here. Uh, wish him well in Tampa. Such a good guy on the field and off the field. What will, what, what, what will you miss most about Akeem? What did you appreciate most about him? Uh, so Akeem's locker was literally like two down from mine. So I was around Akeem, I was around Akeem all the time. And I'll just miss his like presence in the locker room. Like he was just one of the goofiest, like, in the best way, childish guys on the team. He was so funny. He knows everybody laughing, whether we're laughing with him, laughing at him. He didn't care. He was always a good time. But as soon as he stepped over that white line, he was a different animal. He was a, <laughs> a completely different person. And uh, I used to love seeing him flip that switch. So uh, I'll definitely miss Keem, and I definitely wish him nothing but the best in Tampa. See, I don't understand that part about y'all. Like, I think you guys are crazy. You play football. It's a car crash in every play. But, like, some what, what you just said – you live like this normal life and then, okay, Sunday comes, come out of that tunnel and there's a, how do you, ex, ex, can you, ex, or Saturday in college, whatever that, how do you, how do you explain that flip, that switch being flipped? Thank you. I like, I can't explain Like it, it just happens. Like it, I think it's been guys have been playing football now for so long. It just happens. And I think that, I think the biggest thing I've noticed in the NFL is like, uh, like everyone kind of flips that switch now, like guys are so good at it, like they'll flip switch between plays. Like guys will be buddy buddy talking between plays. Where in college, we would never. It was just durr, the whole <laughs> sixty minutes. Whereas in the NFL now, like a play will end, and guys will just be buddy buddy in between plays, and then try to run through his face ten seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, and yeah, I think I think sometimes like you know they want that durr, all the time, but like this is kind of the new. Hey, just because I just kind of congratulated a dude or whatever, I'm talking with him after. Uh, a tenured out where I tackled him and he whatever, and, but hey, next play I'm, I'm going to try to kill you. I love yeah, it exactly. Uh, that takes me to rivalry, pack bears. Now you're you you've, you're experiencing it, but I don't know, man. Virginia Va Tech, that's real. It's it's real. <laughs> it's really really real, and uh, I think that's probably the biggest difference in like the NFL and in college is like the rivalries, like. The college rivalry, that's a genuine, genuine dislike. And uh, in the NFL, it's just its just tough because, like, shoot, we had two guys come from the Packers this season alone that just went from the Packers and now they're with us. 
And uh, I know Jimmy Graham used to play with the Packers, and he was with up last year. And so uh, there's just a lot more changing. Whereas in college, if we had a long snapper, like the third string long snapper, he went from UVA to Virginia Tech, and there are guys on the team that would not talk to him again after that. So like it's just a different passion in it. Yeah. So right, I think for the fans, Packers Bears, but like the players, it's just different. Like this yeah. is yeah. Okay, I got it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Last one here. And oh, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to give you a chance because I know you've watched every Marvel movie in chronological order. Now, I know nothing about this, Charles, but for, for the Marvel fans out there just asking this question, like, what's your favorite? Uh, what do you want the, the Marvel? Because th- these are some some diehards out there. What do you want them to know that, you know, about the, 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 the whole uh, Marvel world that, that you love so much? Captain America is the best hero. He was right. Tony was wrong. And Captain America Civil War is the best Marvel movie. And Game Aside. That's like that's unfair. And Game Aside, Civil War, Captain America Civil War, the best Marvel movie, hands down. See, I did a terrible job answering that, but that answer was amazing. Verderam, you're come on, Marvel. Are you in there, buddy? Listen. <laughs> I I have never seen a Marvel movie. I know. I know it's like blasphemy to most of the country. Okay. I'm also the same guy. Like, I've never seen a Star Wars movie. I don't know. If, I, I, I know. I know. Like, Charles, <laughs> Charles is going to delete my number out of his phone now. <laughs> I mean, but it, I'm, I'm terrible with movies. I'm terrible with movies. I, I feel like if I'm going to sit down and watch three hours, I'm going to watch Charles and the Bears, right? Or I'm going to go watch, I'm going to go watch the Chiefs. I'm going to go watch the, like, I, I have two kids, man. I don't have time. If I, if I have three, you know, uninterrupted hours it's for a football game it's for you know the nba finals get there's no way i'm sitting down and watching lord of the rings it's just it's just not happening maybe when i'm like 55 i'll catch up on all this but for now it's not happening i hear you but you haven't always had two kids i know before that there was just a lot of late night at bars can't be mad at Charles, <laughs> it we're, is what we, it is. we don't work in the office together anymore because we're Rams out in Rockford and the office is in the city. And I'm one of three people that comes in because this is the COVID world. But every time I walk past Verter Rams desk back in the day, he'd be watching like Raiders, Dolphins, 1978. The next day it'd be like, I mean, it was just like, <laughs> I mean, and that doesn't stop after nine to five or whatever. I mean, this is what he does all day. It's not good. It's just sickness. Nothing wrong with being a football junkie. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's right. That's uh, right. Hey, hey uh, Richards is recording. This. He's a big Marvel guy. He's asking what you're most excited for in the series going forward. Uh, I think I'm just excited for, like, who's going to be, like, the new guy. Like, who's going to kind of – they're, they're going to have – someone is going to have to step up or a couple heroes going to have to step up. So I'm excited to see who kind of Marvel decides to kind of lead that charge. Just for the record, he was yelling at me behind the scenes. That wasn't even a question. Good, good on Charles for answering whatever the hell you just said. So, yes, absolutely that. Hey, th- this was a huge pleasure, man. We really appreciate the time. I, I, I hope you have a great, great second season. It seems like there's just a lot of want in that Bears locker room right now. Uh, dudes want to prove themselves. You're clearly one of those guys. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be rooting for you for sure. And, and, and thanks for being on to Wendy. Definitely. Thank you guys so much for having me.